Morning, Fraser. Saturday morning. Not sure what the plans are yet fully for today, but uh, for now, i got to head over to uh, my buddy Greg's place. Uh, just giving him a hand with a uh, light fixture that he's got over there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take Flat Stanley along with me, and uh, we'll go and do that. And that'll be the start. First job. Don't know whether we'll complete the job, but we'll take a look at it. I'm only going, like, you know, two blocks, if that. But, you know, I need some tools, so I'm waiting on the ice. So we're thinking, we're thinking car karaoke would be good. Let's see what we can. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. Shall we go crazy this morning? Let's go crazy this morning. Let's go crazy. Let's sing it. Stationary car karaoke. He's got his hands raised. That everything, that has breath, praise the Lord. He doesn't sing loud, he's shy. Mountains, when I'm sharp, I praise when I'm not. Praise when surrounded. Praise is the water when enemies drown. I've got a reason to praise. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I can see mostly. <laughs> it's more than a sound. That brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. car karaoke that's it for car karaoke this morning it was a short drive I'm gonna pretend that I edited it out <laughs> all right let's go fix a light picture
Uh, Stanley's watching the uh, killer whales. Five of them. Five of them right together. There's a big one back there though. Alright, back in one of my happy places, back in the garage. Uh, buddy of mine, Garth. I've chatted about Garth before. Gave this to me um, back in October. Uh, we'd gone out fishing a few times. He'd come over from the island and and uh, somebody had given this to him years ago. And so he gave it to me and thought I might like it and thought I might like to try it. I think it's the coolest looking thing. And what it does is when it goes through the water, the um, Essentially, okay, start again. The downrigger, so the big downrigger with the big heavy ball, hooks onto here. The actual ball portion hooks onto here, right? So that it still has the weight to go down. But the downrigger itself goes onto here, and the ball, big 15 pound wall, ball, pulls it down in the water, and the water hits here, causes this to spin, right? So that causes that to spin to a point where, let's see if I can do this. It causes this to, a, to point to a spin where it's supposed to get to a, uh, a slack spot. But right now it's not doing that. So anyway, then when the slack spot hits, this parachute is already open and it just basically pulls the line way out to the back. Boom. See how the, the propeller is not spinning? Because it's in the slack spot. All the way out. And then once it hits the out thing, this thing has still been spinning, right? And then suddenly, the slack spot is taken up and it pulls in the line again. All right? So I think it's off inside a little bit. Anyway, the idea is that this will... So this the, the fishing line comes down and the fishing line attaches into here, into this little space here. It's called a quick release. And what this does gets the the line down to a certain level where we want to fish, but this now brings it in and back all the time. And the action, the movement of the lure is supposed to agitate uh, a fish bite, right? So I like it. I think it's very cool, but I need to take a look at it and see what's wrong with it. So we'll pull the uh, Hold that off, and we're gonna have a look. Then I can hang out with me here. There you go. I'm not sure this is gonna be something I can do. I think it's fine. I think what I need to do is start with it um, fully extended, and I, I wasn't doing that when I was fishing. Like, you know. with Fraser and down jigger. Good team. I think next time we go fishing we're going to try that. I need a project man. I need a tiger torch on Wednesday. plywood between the aluminum square tubing and the aluminum sheet. My goal is to take that out and I, I want to see it welded. But one thing at a time, right? Let's see what we can do. Woo! Don't know where that one went, but I'm glad I was
was wearing my glasses at that one. That was dumb. Don't do that. Don't use that to... Not a hammer. It's probably if this had any strength to this whatever. Makes up for not welding it, I guess. <laughs> I do not like common screws, like the common heads. Don't lie. Did you say that you, um, last time I made the chicken, that you liked the fucking Oh, I'm easy going either way. I'm easy going either way. I love this first. In any way, shape, or form. Brussels sprouts are the fastest. I beg to differ, but. Don't be silly. Burning stinky things. No burning stinky things in here. I feel like, yes, there is. Shirt sleeve. Yeah, okay, it's not, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's scaring me a little bit that I don't know where those are going, but you know, you know, yeah, a little bit. I don't feel anything burning anywhere on my body, so that's a good sign. gimmicks going you can get them for the grinders and I, and I have had them as well I don't think I have one right now but uh, they're they're a grinder type thing but they're like a I don't know some sort of a silicone coated with an abrasive or something I did my old boat my old aluminum boat in its entirety I uh, stripped all the paint off with this I went all that stuff off there I think the only way to do that for the grinder this isn't gonna work great but it's not really taking down the metal either and that's the whole point the grinder's got way more power than this. So the goal is that when we uh, we do put this boat back outside, we're gonna try and put this hardcover thing on, if it's ready. So I gotta get a couple more of those, uh, those grinding pads. So I've never welded aluminum, but you know, I, I've been told that it's not, it's not good for you, which, uh, yeah, I'm not sure any welding is. But certainly they say smelling it is not good, right? Do it outside. You're supposed to do all that stuff in, in well, you know, ventilated areas anyway, right? I would do it right outside. Do I do I weld it a little bit at a time? Clear out the area that I want. Like start, you know, here kind of thing. Weld this piece on. Once I get all this junk out of there, because there's rivets in there. But the rivets allowed for the con uh, concrete. The rivets allowed for the plywood. So there's a, you know, it was actually probably a little over a quarter of an inch kind of thing that's uh, it's there for a gap. I weld it a little bit by little bit and that's, you know, less intimidating, right? <laughs> Who didn't see that coming? I saw it coming. Did it anyway. See, I'm keeping these things in, these wood things in here. I'm keeping those in there because I'd like to kind of keep that, I like that angle, that round. So I'm trying to Keep all that there. Until I can find the aluminum. Nobody has the aluminum in stock. Most of this wood that's in here is just dust. You see the gap in there, eh? So the rivet's there. You see the gap. I'm sure that was supposed to be an eighth, but I'm pretty sure that's close to a quarter. I could measure it, but then I'd prove myself wrong, and I don't want to do that. So. Have you guys watched The Chosen yet? I like The Chosen. It's a good show. Basically, it's about, it's about the New Testament. See, if you watched The Chosen, then, you know, you could almost, not really, but almost follow along as I'm reading, you know, the New Testament Gospels here. See? They give the disciples um, character. They give them personalities, which I've, I've never been able to read into the disciples, really, when I've been reading the Bible and stuff. So, 
I appreciate it. See, I get into these moods or, or modes or whatever where, you know, I want to do a job, I want to do a project. But if it's too big a project or too small a project, depending on the time of day, I don't want to start it, right? So, but again, I got to get to that point where I realize that projects don't have to be done in the day. That's just a struggle that I have. See, that one hurt. Didn't cut, but it hurt. So that's the wood I've taken out of there today. Yeesh. All right, bud, it's uh, 10 to 5, so not all these projects are uh, glorious, you know, like the drywall. <laughs> Some of them are downright mundane, but uh, but they need to be done. And I tell you, as soon as I can find the uh, the aluminum tubing, I'll be I'll be working on this a whole lot a uh, whole lot harder. But I've got to pick up a couple of those uh, those discs for cleaning that off a little bit better, because the grinder is just so much more powerful than than trying to use a drill. Drill is just not. It's good for small jobs, but not not that. But that looks like that's about it for today, man. Allie's probably making dinner. She's probably making she's making a. Uh, a uh, chicken broccoli Brussels sprout uh, dinner tonight. It's like a, it's not a casserole, it's just a pan dish, but oh, it's so good. I love Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are awesome. Weird, I've loved Brussels sprouts ever since I was probably three or four. They told me it was little mini cabbages, and I loved cabbage. That was it, I was hooked. It's kind of funny because Allie can't stand the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Let's go get Stanley. Stanley was hanging out playing mechanic today. Working on my uh, my kid's uh, motorcycle engine. Do you get any, uh, anything done? Or are you just kind of inspect it and stuff? Hey, Fraser. So, uh, it was a bit of an active day today. You know, a little bit more than what I anticipated being outside, which, you know, was okay. It's a little cold, but it wasn't too bad. Um, went over to, uh, to Greg's place this morning and uh, looked at that light fixture. I don't think we didn't. We basically determined there's nothing wrong with the light fixture. It's just the uh, those LED light bulbs. They even though they don't create a lot of heat, they have a tendency to create some, and some of them crack. And I think uh, depending on where they crack, you know, they cause an issue because it it seemed to be the the light fixture was was good, and then it would just one of the bulbs would just go out, and I touched the bulb once. And it, and it came back on. So I said, oh, okay, let's wait for it to do it again. So sure enough, it went out again. And I think what's happening is whatever element is in there is, is it's on and it, it heats up a little bit. And then for whatever reason, it displaces something in the connection. And then of course, once it cools down again, it, it comes back into play. So it's just moving like a, a micro amount, but nonetheless, I think that's what's going on. So we took the, we took the bulb out and we basically swapped places with the other bulb and it was doing the same thing in the other one and the other one was doing fine. So, uh, we put a new bulb in there and everything's fine. Just, you know, some of those LED bulbs are just a little bit, a little bit weird because they're, they're harder to see if they compare to the incandescents when they go right sometimes. So anyway, yeah, I did that, got that job done. That was nice. I went for a bit of a drive down to uh, the lower lookout there for a bit. Saw some sailboats, so I took some video of some of the sailboats uh, doing their little their little loops or their little tracks or whatever it was they were doing there. Uh, it was pretty neat to to watch them actually because when they're when they go when they were going around that that buoy, you know the the I don't know whether it's the main sail, what I don't know about sailing, but the the front sail would just kind of blah just blah, go to nothing, and then they turn around and then it would fill up again. Which is really weird because the wind is coming kind of at them, right? And yet it still somehow fills up with air. I don't understand how it works, but it's pretty cool to watch. And then, uh, yeah, we Allie was looking on on the whatever the Powell River uh, whale watching app thing. I don't know Facebook thing, whatever that is. And uh, she'd seen that there was whales going down, going south from from like the viewpoint. So the three of us, Allie, me, and Stanley, ripped down to, uh, to Grief Point again. And I could see them as I was driving down. I could see them in the distance, and they were right, right at the point, right at Grief Point. So we went to Airplane Park, and uh, yeah, it was good. We were able to see them. Got a little bit of video. Didn't get as much as I want. They, it's funny. They, they took probably a half an hour to get from like the viewpoint down 
to Grief Point, which is a which is a short distance, right? We fished it, and it's not a big deal. But they were taking their time, and then when they got around that point, they just took off south, man. It, somebody had said that they were feeding uh, before they hit the point, and then I guess once they were finished feeding, they had an appointment. Maybe it was a doctor's appointment. Maybe they're trying to catch a ferry. I have no idea, but they just ripped. So, but we got we got a couple of little clips of uh, a video, a little bit of a clip with uh, with Stanley there. Hard to see them in the background because they're they're quite small in those little cameras. But then I grabbed the other camera out and and uh, was able to. Uh, you know, zoom in on them a little bit, which was kind of cool. So I got a couple of decent shots of them. But it's ridiculous that, like, we live in an area, it's, that was literally on the beach, five to seven minutes from our house. Like, it's just beautiful. It's just amazing here. I got, it's, I, yeah, I feel very blessed to, to live here. So it's very cool. Uh, yeah, got home and... Yeah, basically just looked for a job to do downstairs and uh, tried to look at that that uh, down jigger. I love that thing. I, lo I love the idea of that thing. <laughs> uh, you know, my buddies that, that know that I have it think it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. And I kind of do too, but I don't care. I want to try it. I think it's uh, great. We, we Garth and I tried it, but it wasn't working. And I think what happened is I, I wasn't starting it right. When I was playing with it today... It only goes in so far, and then if you if it stays at the the medium depth, without going back, and you try and pull peel it in again with the propeller, it'll get stuck and it won't work. So I'm thinking what I have to do is when I when I go to set it down in the water, I have to rip it out the full length and start it back there. That way, when it kicks in, it'll only come in about halfway or or so, and then it should. Should do the job. We'll see. Next time we get out fishing, maybe in a week or two. I'm hoping it's only a week, because by next Friday it should be down to, or down to, it should be back up to like seven degrees. So that's my that's my hope. And then yeah, just worked on the uh, on the potential boat roof, um, cleaning out all the wood. It's going to be a multi-day project that one. And again, I got to get my button gear to do it, but I got to find the aluminum. So once I get all the wood out, clean it up, uh, Tim found those discs that he had. So I'm going to put those on the grinder and that'll grind up and I'll have that ground up and <laughs> ground up. <laughs> Make sure Stanley stays out of the way and he doesn't get ground up. But yeah, we will get the, those uh, all cleaned up and such like that. It'll probably take, take a couple hours, maybe kind of thing, right? But the, it does a nice job. I think I think once it's done, I'm, I'm I'm hopefully in my mind's eye, I can see what it looks like when I'm done. So anyway, man, I uh, thought I would share with you tonight again, sticking in in the New Testament, sticking in Matthew. We're going to read from Matthew chapter seven, verses thirteen and fourteen. And again, this is still Jesus speaking. Uh, Sermon on the Mount kind of thing. And I'm going to do a shameless plug as I lift up my Bible. And you see that I've got one of the Fisherman Fraser logos on the back. <laughs> uh, so, this is Jesus speaking to the crowds. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So this is very similar to the the uh, scripture that we read about. You know, it's easier for a rich man, or uh, sorry, it's it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle, um, the needle gate kind of thing, uh, than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. It's very similar, but this is just speaking in generalities about about everybody. The path to destruction would be. I call it the road to hell, but essentially the road not to God, right? The road to God, most people always kind of want to follow their own thing and they want to go their own way and they want to do their own thing. Don't tell me how to live. Don't do this. Don't do that. And there's, there's very few that actually wind up coming to a point of saying, yes, God, thank you for dying for me on the cross. 
I accept you, and please forgive me my sins. And then walk in that way with him, right? And there's there's uh, the vast majority have a tendency to go the other way and do what they want. And that's that's what this verse is talking about here. Make every effort to enter through the narrow gate. Make every en- effort to find God, to find the way and the path to to life, to everlasting life. The only way man could be reconciled to God was by God making a way, by coming and dying on the cross and his blood being shed for our sins as an atonement for sin. And we ask for forgiveness and we accept that. That's the only way. It's funny that it's a narrow... Well, it's, it's not funny that it's narrow. The The reality is is that it's, it's a very narrow point, but that narrow point is not... It doesn't exclude anybody. It, it, God, again, wants all to come to repentance. He doesn't want any to perish. He doesn't enjoy anybody perishing. Ezekiel 33.11 says, Say to them, As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their wicked ways and live. Turn. Turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? So he was specifically talking there, um, to those that were disobedient within the house of Israel, but it's that is the full cross section. It doesn't matter whether it was Israel or anybody else. God takes absolutely no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He would much rather they come to repentance and turn from their their wicked ways and have a relationship with Him. That's why He created us. I keep saying that. I know that, but that's true, man. That's just what He wants. He wants relationship, just like this. He wants relationship with you, with me, with everybody. And anybody can have it. It is not exclusive. Anybody can have it. They just have to ask. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share tonight. So, I hope you enjoyed seeing the Orca today. That was. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to get a, a bit of a better picture than the last time. I know Stanley was pretty stoked. It's the first time he's ever seen Orca. So, you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, Fraser, I love you. I miss you. God loves you. I look forward to seeing you soon. And we will, and we, we will post more tomorrow.